uh, all of you hope you guys are great so i'm really glad that many of you have tried to include the logging functionality and account creation functionality into the nft marketplace using the same api we have built in that huge course okay so i hope you guys have watched that entire api course if you haven't i'll link an i button in the description so you guys can follow that in this video we're going to use the same api to add the logging functionality into our application okay so i'm using the same api in one of my project okay so here you can see this is the application currently I'm working on and this is the account creation. So let's create the login. Then I will show you the background code. Okay. So let me provide the name. I'll say Dalat Hussain and I have to give my email ID. And I have to provide the right email ID here because I have added two step validation. In your case, you won't have this functionality, but I have added this two-step validation. So I will get a, I'll get email in my email ID and I have to confirm that. So this is the email I have provided. I have to give the password. So let's provide the confirm password. And now I have to click on this submit. And you can see the account creation is happened. And here I'm logged into my application. And here I will have all this drop down menu. I'll click on this account. Once you create your account, you will automatically log into the application. And this is your account page. And here you will find all the details about yourself. So here we have a couple of fields. So you can easily able to update all of the data. From here, you can easily able to change the password. So old password and then you have to change your password. This is the invoice section we have. So if you buy any courses, you will have the invoice here. If you click on the help so here you will get the help so if you need any consultation any you have any problems so you can get it from here and this is the profile section so here we have included this section so you can write about yourself because it's going to be a community based application so other developer can know you so that's why we have included this functionality so you can click here and you can easily able to update the images of yourself so i'll click and i can update it write about yourself if you come to the free course here you will have all the free courses which is available into this application this is the paid courses so here we have have couple of paid courses that's all you will find here and this is going to be your courses so those courses you will purchase that would be available here okay and that's how the application would work so I'll, I'll, I'll make a complete tutorial on this application that what are the functionality we have included and how what are the cool functionality we have built into this so I'll make a detailed video on this if you guys really want me to make a detailed video on this about the functionality do let me know in the comment section so I can ex explain that now let's check the mail the whether we have received the mail or not and here I'm back into my account and you can see right now I got this email into my promotion tab because I'm using the free version so you can see this is the name I have given developer code cam and here we have providing all of these things and if you click on this upload to profile you will go back to your account page and you can easily able to update your information so everything's happening absolutely great if i come here if i click on this logout i will automatically logged out from this application i'm no longer able to have that account page so i have to first log in then it will allow me to access all the data so i'll click on this login and let me log in once again okay so let me pa put the password so i'll say p I don't need to say that and I'm going to click on the submit and here I'm back into my applications I will close this one and I will go back to the account and I can have the look you can see the entire process is happening so smoothly because we have designed the entire data model in our API in that way okay so the same API I'm using here but we have a little bit advancement in that in this video I'll only focus that how you can connect the API we have built so make sure to watch if you are watching this video for the very first time make sure to watch the complete api series in that you will have in-depth knowledge okay so as you can see right now i'm running so this is the application we are currently on and now let me show you so let's come here this is the api we have inside the api if you come to the controller inside the controller we have this auth controller so this is the functionality we have built i've done a little bit of modification in that but the entire function is quite similar entire system is quite similar in all of the, all the application when it's come to authentication so this is the logout section we have and this is the login so first we are checking the information the email and the password then we are checking that whether the email and password is correct it's provided if it's not there then we have to throw this error message and then we are simply checking the entire data the information of the user into our database and then we are returning the jw token so that's pretty much what we are doing here in the api section now what we can do is let's come back to the pages so i'll go back to the pages inside the pages here we have the login so i'll click on this login and here you can see this is what we have done here okay so this is the function which is reliable for making the entire login system so what i'm doing i'm using this prevent default because i'm using form so i want to just just stop this 
default behavior of the form. So here I'm using access to make call to our API. So we are using post method because we're going to post data, email and the password. So method would be post. I see one of you have made this mistake instead of post you have, guys have written get that and because of that you guys were getting an error so this is the method we have to use and this is the url we have to define so you can see that here i'm using relative url what is a relative url because right now i'm running this application on my local host and i'm also testing this on one of my free server okay so when you provide the relative url like this it will automatically take whatever the you, you whatever the domain name you have okay so it will take the name of the domain and then it will attach that so this is called relative url okay hope this makes sense so i was not able to set the token in the browser and that token is entirely responsible for checking whether the user is logged into the application or whether he done any kind of modification or try to hack it okay so that token is very important which we are storing in the browser in form of cookie okay so that's why we have used this and many of you have not used this and because of this you guys were getting an error so make sure you have to use this property called credential width and here you have to pass the data so our api can handle and here i'm simply doing the same thing i'm checking for success and i'm simply displaying all the data so that's the only thing you have to do is because many of you have stuck at this portion so make sure when you use xcs you have to set this property called with credential and if you use fetch it's called credential okay so make sure to use that one and that's it that's it that's the only thing you have to do if i go back to the user sign up the same thing i'm doing there okay the same old logic i'm following because that's the way to go so here you can see i'm still making the relative url api call it's a post method because we have to put the data and here i'm using this with credential because it will return the cookie so i want to accept the cookie and i want to store into the browser of the user so i can easily be able to check whether the user is logged in or whether he exists into our database or not or when he changes password so that's all the things we are doing based on the cookie and here we are simply passing the data so hope this entire thing makes sense okay i believe you guys have got your idea all you have to do is to add this with credential and that will fix all your error so hope this entire thing makes sense if you still have any confusion any doubt do let me know in the comment section okay i'll try to make a video on that and i will show you that how you can use the api the powerful api you have built and you can include into the any application you can see the same structure i'm following because when it's come to authentication when it's come to adding data when it's come to fetching data when it's come to rendering data the same logic exists you can do the modification in the styling of writing the code okay instead of writing the code in the same in in one section you can divide it in multiple section and you can do crazy stuff but the logic is same when it's come to authentication that's happened based on the cookies so the same logic we are following here in this application okay so make sure to include this and that will fix your issue and if you still have any confusion any doubt do let me know in the comment section i'll try to help you in that and with that i'm ending this and if you haven't watched the nft marketplace project then make sure to watch that and make sure to watch the nft marketplace api the api we have built which it's close to around 11 hours so huge if you build that you can become a master of backend developer you can call yourself monk developer okay monk you can know how to work with a data model you will know how to work mongoose express node.js we have talked a lot of things okay with that but i'm end <laughs> with that i'm ending this video hope you guys have liked it if you still have any confusion and doubt do let me know in the comment section